The San Francisco Giants are a storied franchise decorated with dozens of fantastic starting pitchers in their history, and pitching was the backbone of their trio of rings in the early 2010s. When you think of those championship-winning teams, a few names come easily to mind. The Freak, Matt Cain's Perfect Game, The Beard. One that fans usually don't remember existed at the back end of the rotation is Ryan Vogelsong. Giants fans know him for sure, but across baseball, he's not really one of the remembered faces of these championship teams. He and endured a dismal trade that painted him as a bust, career-threatening injuries to his arm and his head, years pitching in overseas countries, and no real success for the entirety of his 20s. But despite his adversity, Vogelsong ended his career as a champion. Sure, Ryan Vogelsong was a secondary character on a World Series winning team, but his performance is perhaps the most impressive given the story of his tumultuous career. So today's video is all about him. To fully grasp the improbability of his success, we'll have to go back to the start of his pro ball days in 1998, nearly 15 years before he had eventually climbed the summit with San Francisco. Vogelsong was a fifth round draft pick with the San Francisco Giants back in 98, as I mentioned before, never held in high regard as a top prospect by any means. However, it didn't take very long for guys to notice the righty Vogelsong since he went 6-1 and one in his first 10 starts as a pro with a 1.77 ERA and 66 strikeouts in 56 innings. His fastball touched the low 90s but was not overpowering by any means, so Vogelsong relied on his breaking pitches, specifically a devastating curveball. However, he did struggle as the swingman for San Francisco. Despite the club winning 90 games in Barry Bonds, taking home another MVP award, they missed the playoffs in 2001. Halfway through the season, the Giants decided to part ways with the promising Vogelsong in a deal with Pittsburgh, where they acquired somebody named Jason Schmidt. He was a largely unproven and unpolished pitcher, but he joined an already stacked Giants rotation and flourished under new management. From 2002 to 2004, Schmidt started 90 games and pitched brilliantly, helping to stabilize the low end of the Giants rotation over three 90-plus win years, with the first two including playoff berths. Schmidt placed second in Cy Young voting in 2003 and fourth in 2004. In short, the Giants were smart for seeing Schmidt's potential and got a ton out of this trade. 618 innings pitched, a 2.99 ERA, 1.07 whip, and 655 strikeouts to go along with two all-star appearances. Not too shabby. This is the weight and the cloud that hung over Ryan Vogelsong's head when he arrived in Pittsburgh, as Pirates fans quickly learned that letting go of Schmidt was a huge mistake. Vogelsong spent his first season there in the minors in 2002 and pitched extremely poorly in AAA. He'd come up for two starts at the end of the season and would end up tearing his UCL, which as most fans know, means the kiss of death for a pitcher, Tommy John surgery. Vogelsong would spend a year on the shelf, the same year where the Giants advanced to the World Series for the first time in a decade. When Vogelsong eventually arrived back at the majors in 2003, things didn't improve much either. While Schmidt and the Giants climbed to the World Series, Vogelsong and the Pirates continuously sputtered over a miserable four-year span. 2004 specifically was a horrendous year for Vogelsong, who was now 26 years old and no longer a true youngster of the league. He got his first long look at Major League batters on the rebound from Tommy John, but he allowed 148 hits in just 130 three innings, with an astounding 15% of those hits going for home runs. His velocity was down, his command sputtered, and his breaking pitches no longer had the edge that they used to. This was one of the worst seasons in Pirates history, no joke. It was the highest single season ERA among any Pirates pitcher with at least 20 starts, and the lowest F war in a single season by any Pirates pitcher with at least 130 innings pitched in one year. A 6.50 ERA, 1.62 whip, and 22 home runs allowed made Ryan Vogelsong maybe the worst starter in the league that year. Finally, after after another dismal season out of the bullpen in 2006, Vogelsong's tenure in Pittsburgh came to a merciful end as he was cut. The then 28-year-old had six seasons of Major League Ball under his belt and only an ugly 5.86 ERA and a serious arm injury to show for it. Unsurprisingly, no big league ball clubs called to make him offers in the offseason and Vogelsong was left adrift, unsure of where his next steps would take him. In a quote from him reflecting on this time, he said, I was sitting at home, really just wondering if I would ever get another chance to play baseball again as a professional. And I didn't really know at that point where my career was going or if it was going to be over. Vogelsong did receive one call from Japan. The pairing wasn't exactly a match made in heaven, Vogelsong was wary of leaving the US, he didn't speak a lick of Japanese, and held hope that maybe a minor league contract would find its way to him. But after months of sitting on his hands, a deal was struck with the Hanshin Tigers. Reviving a career in Japan or Korea has become more common in the modern landscape of MLB, but back in the mid-2000s, it wasn't such commonplace. Some examples stood out, like Cecil Fielder, who left the US 
twice as a bench warmer and returned as a two-time home run king, but suffice to say, the odds were stacked against Vogelsong. While Vogelsong's ERA numbers weren't always the best in the league, he was definitely improving and finding his form again as a member of the Tigers in Japan. In three seasons overseas, Vogelsong put up respectable numbers as both a starter and a reliever, including 309 innings, a 3.75 ERA, and 288 strikeouts. What caught many teams' attention was Vogelsong's improvement on his command and strikeout numbers in his time in Japan. The now 31-year-old put up his best strikeout-to-walk ratio of his career at 3.5. Vogelsong had finally done enough to prove his worth to MLB teams once again, and after three years, he got some minor league offers from the Phillies and Angels for the 2010 season. But even after his rejuvenation overseas, Vogelsong was still struggling in minor league ball. The Phillies cut him, the Angels picked him up, and then they cut him after a couple months, and the 2010 offseason rolled around with Vogelsong unemployed once again. This certainly felt like the end of the road for the journeyman who was about to turn 33 years old. That is, until an old friend came calling out of nowhere. You'd think that if Vogelsong was going to return to the league, it would have been for one of the worst teams in the game, but how about the former world champions from the year prior? The San Francisco Giants had just won the 2010 World Series, snapping a 50-year championship drought. They got surprise playoff performances out of an average offensive lineup, while riding the coattails of a young, talented rotation and elite back-end bullpen. However, they would use the 2011 offseason to address the depth behind their pitching, knowing it wasn't likely they'd get an injury-free season once again, and they'd be right. During that exact time of revelation, Vogelsong was playing winter ball in Venezuela in 2010, something he would later state as the turning point to recover his career. Vogelsong was obviously happy to have any role, but after returning to the big leagues, he still felt that he could find success at the highest level as a starter. Vogelsong came up at the end of April to replace the injured Barry Zito, and wouldn't you know, he would make his first MLB start in six years against the team he knew very well, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Five and two-thirds innings, four hits, two earned runs, and eight strikeouts later, Vogelsong got his first major league win in nearly six years. After a hiccup against the Mets where he allowed five runs but still got the win, Vogelsong proceeded to allow fewer than five runs in all but one of the other 26 games started in 2011. This minor blip kicked off the best season of Vogelsong's career, and one of the best in Giants history as well. He maintained a 1.78 ERA over 35 and a third innings in the month of May, which was fifth in the National League but also only second on the San Francisco Giants to Tim Lincecum, which I think is pretty funny. This solidified his spot in the Giants' rotation behind Lincecum, Matt Cain, and Madison Bumgarner. His terrific first half made him a surprise NL All-Star roster addition on Bruce Bochy's team, and his seven shutout innings in his first start after the All-Star break against the Dodgers qualified him for the ERA title with a 2.02 mark. Five years after getting cut from the worst team in the league, Ryan Vogelsong was arguably the best pitcher on the best team in the National League. Vogelsong was using his sinker more to mix hitters up on his four-seamer while also using his changeup more in place of a slider that was getting battered around. And this was all punctuated by his always reliable curveball, which had the highest strikeout percentage of any of his pitches. Overall, Vogelsong stayed healthy in 2011 and pitched a full season as a starter for the first time in his extended career. His 2.71 ERA was 6 in MLB and best on the Giants staff that had pitched their way to a World Series victory just a year prior. He even placed 11th in NL Cy Young voting as well. Despite the club's 86 wins, however, they would miss the playoffs, once again keeping Vogelsong on the outside looking in come October. This, however, would set the stage for a dramatic October one year later. In the offseason, Vogelsong earned himself a two-year deal worth $8 million, guaranteeing himself a spot in the starting rotation going forward. With the return of Barry Azito, the starter promotion of Brandon Belt, and new additions in Angel Pagan, Ryan Terrio, and Melky Cabrera, the 2012 Giants looked ready to make a deep playoff run once again. Vogelsong appeared to be somehow improving on his incredible 2011 season. Between the start of May and the end of July, he didn't allow more than three runs, earned or unearned, in any of his 16 starts. Not only was this really impressive, but it was also absolutely vital for a middling Giants team who hovered around 500 during this entire stretch due to an anemic offense. After a surprise snub from the All-Star game, Ryan Vogelsong once again found himself as the ERA leader of the National League. On August 8th, he was even a Cy Young favorite with a 2.27 ERA and 2.15 batting average against in 143 innings. However, Vogie would pitch to a 6.75 ERA in his final 10 starts, worrying fans that he might not have the stamina for a playoff run after never pitching that far into a season. After the All-Star break, they went 48-28, and won the division, and propelled Buster Posey to an eventual MVP award. For his consistency in the face of adversity at 35 years old, Ryan Vogelsong was going to his very first MLB postseason, a journey spanning nearly 15 years at this point. Many things could have been in store for him, but Vogie still managed to shock everybody in the postseason.
Ryan Vogelsong's postseason debut could not have come at a more pivotal point for the Giants' season. After a deflating 9-0 loss in Game 2, San Francisco saw themselves down 2-0 in the series on the brink of elimination and heading away from their home stadium, sending Ryan Vogelsong to the bump against Homer Bailey. Vogelsong stepped up to the challenge, tossing five innings of one-run ball and matching a dominant performance from Bailey. He retired prolific hitters Scott Rowland and Jay Bruce in high-intensity moments to keep the game tied. Game 3 would end up going 10 innings with the Giants' ultimately etching out a clutch win, kick-starting their reverse 3-0 comeback and improbable series win. And none of that happens without Ryan Vogelsong's clutch five innings. He wouldn't pitch again until the NLCS versus the Cardinals, and after a close game one loss, the Giants were in danger of falling into another hole with veteran Chris Carpenter towing the slab. But Ryan Vogelsong was up to the challenge yet again, outdueling Chris Carpenter and holding St. Louis to just one run over seven stellar innings, notching his first playoff victory in the process. This also gave much-needed relief to a heavily used bull Open, which would go a long way in the NLCS and on. The Giants once again faced elimination in Game 6 when Vogelsong took the hill for his third start. Even after already facing the Cardinals hitters once, they still couldn't find a way to crack Vogelsong. He once again turned in seven fantastic innings of one-run ball, with a playoff best nine strikeouts to help the Giants secure a 6-1 win and force Game 7. The Giants rode the momentum to a decisive 9-0 victory in Game 7 and another World Series berth, just two years after their first World Series win in 50 years. Vogelsong's lone World Series start against the Detroit Tigers came under very different circumstances than his prior outings, with the Giants holding a 2-0 lead in the series. Vogelsong followed the path of Madison Bumgarner from the night prior, hurling five and two-thirds scoreless innings against a befuddled Tigers lineup. Despite lining up a runner in every single inning, Vogelsong managed to escape every jam, leading the Giants to a 2-0 shutout victory and eventually a World Series sweep. Overall, Vogelsong's numbers were nuts, with a 3-0 record and a 1.09 ERA in 24 Four and two-thirds innings, the lowest ERA among all Giants starting pitchers in that year's playoff run. His 2012 postseason ERA was the best since Oral Hershiser's 1.05 mark in 1988, with a minimum of 24 innings. He also joined Christy Mathewson as the only pitchers to start their postseason careers with four consecutive starts of five or more innings, giving up one run or fewer. Had Pablo Sandoval not powered the offense with six home runs over the course of the playoffs, Vogelsong was a shoe-in for the Babe Ruth Award, given to the player with the best postseason wide performance. But like the title of this video indicates, this performance is largely forgotten. The painful truth of this all is that it's hard to remember this incredible performance when just two years later, Madison Bumgarner became the best playoff pitcher of all time for the exact same ball club. And with his 25 playoff innings, Vogelsong ended up throwing about 210 innings in that 2012 season, far more than he ever has before. He just wouldn't be the same after this season because of this. He left everything on the field for that team and got a World Series ring out of the deal, so I'm sure he doesn't mind. Ryan Vogelsong's career arc is one of a kind. There's nobody I can think of that had 10 plus years of mediocrity and failure before finally hitting their stride in what should normally be the twilight of their career, the beginning of the end. Vogelsong would enjoy a few more years of success after the peak of his career in 2011 and 2012. He'd win another ring with the Giants in 2014 and even make a return to his old stopping grounds in Pittsburgh in his final season. These days, he quietly resides with his two rings and his family in a quiet area of Georgia, neighbored by former teammates and content with the legacy he left behind. For today, I think we should all recall his greatest efforts with the appropriate amount of fondness and appreciation, even if he never realizes it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Now for a word from today's sponsor, Keeps. Thank you again to Keeps for sponsoring today's video. This is a company that has you covered, guys. Two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time that they're 35 years old. Keeps offers clinically proven, research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. With Keeps, you can get quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. All Keeps treatment plans are doctor recommended and delivered straight to your door at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. They have 24-7 care and support as well with a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. Each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging so you can connect with your prescribing doctor about anything, anytime. Easily subscribe to Keeps and get refill reminders so you'll never run low on the products you need to take care of your hair. Hair loss stops with Keeps. So to get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash jolly or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash jolly for 50% off your first order. Thanks for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next time.